Homo erectus had conquered the old world. The fact that they made it so far with limited technology and relatively small brains makes them seem even more remarkable. And their longevity was astonishing. A few pockets of Homo erectus may have been still clinging on in Asia just 50,000 years ago. That's a span of two million years. Our own species has only been around for 200,000. What was the secret of Homo erectus's success? The amazing finds at Dimenisi have given us one last clue. One of the skulls belonged to an old man. His jawbone revealed he had lost all his teeth well before he died. That was a real surprise. It means that this individual survived two years without teeth. For an elder to have survived that long without teeth must mean that others in the group were feeding him, perhaps even chewing his food for him. I love this story. This was a remarkable testimony from the past about the quality of emotional life that may have characterized Homo erectus. Here is a tantalizing clue to what may be this ancestor's most important legacy, the instinct to look after each other. And it helps us imagine Turkana Boy's final day on Earth. In the animator's scenario, he starts the day out on a hunt but he has trouble keeping up with the hunting party. Why? The evidence from his skeleton is that he was sick and in pain at the time he died. If we look at his lower jaw, we can see right here under the teeth that we've got a bit of an abscess and an infection. That kind of an infection could have entered the rest of his body, could have killed him. An abscess that ate away that much of his jawbone would have been agonizing. Turkana boy is in so much pain, he's unable to continue the hunt. Knowing he would be looked after, perhaps he returned to his campsite to find comfort among the females. I think he was probably a miserable fellow. Um, in a lot of pain and very dependent on, on support and handouts. So it was a species that already felt that he's one of our weaklings that, you know, we love and must, must protect and care for to have got him that far. But however much they may have wanted to help him, there was nothing they could do about the infection that was probably spreading through his body. From what the evidence suggests, I just always imagined him not knowing what was wrong with him. And there's a sadness to it. But ultimately from that comes this immortal being. His skeleton was so complete, it is likely he died in water, which would have protected him. It's very unusual to get a skeleton because normally these things are eaten by carnivores. And in this case, it seems that the boy's body was washed into a swamp, and so the carnivores never saw it and never destroyed it. And it gradually decomposed, and as the rivers flooded, brought in more sediment, buried it. And you could see footprints of hippos that had walked all over the bones, and, and some of the ribs and things were standing vertically instead of lying flat on the ground. And, you could sort of reconstruct the situation and how, how the boy, what had happened after he died and, and why he was complete. It was just, it really was, it was an amazing experience to see it. For almost two million years, his bones were preserved by the earth. Their discovery opened a window for us on an unknown world. The world of the most successful human ancestor of all time, Homo erectus.
they've revealed to us that mysterious moment when almost everything human was born. Our bodies, our minds, our emotions. Think of all we've become. Trace the threads of our origins through the ancestors who went before. They all lead back to Turkana boy and his kind, the first humans. <laughs>